Okay. We are in uh, section 9.5 where we are uh, being able to factor what is called simple trinomials. So being able to factor a simple trinomial, the uh, general uh, representation for this would be is considered x squared plus bx plus c. And when we're in that form of trinomial, again, trinomial is where we have three terms, one, two, and three. So being able to factor them out is basically if we remember that we have an x plus 3 times quantity x plus 4. When we FOIL this out here and then here, here, and here, comes out looking like this. And then when we combine like terms, we get it in a trinomial of x squared plus 7x plus 12. Well, that's what we were doing before. Now, with these examples here, we are going to do what is almost the, like the reverse FOIL. We're getting the trinomial. Let's put it back into parentheses form. Okay? So examples A and B uh, deal with, um, they want us to factor it out when B and C are positive. So we want to get it back into parentheses form. So let's do that. So I got parentheses, parentheses. And since my coefficient here is 1, I can just write this out as x and x. Now, what's really important is to, is to determine what th this uh, symbol will be. If it's a plus sign, that tells us that both, inside both of the parentheses, both of them are going to be a plus. Or both of them are going to be the same, I'm sorry. This plus sign here tells me that they're both going to be pluses. So now, since they're both pluses, I want to find... I want to find two values where x, or I'm sorry, where the sum is 4, which is where we get here, and then the product of those two numbers will give me 3. And the two numbers I'm looking for are 3 and 1. And the reason why I can say that is if I were to foil this out, I should get the answer I have right here. So if I go x squared plus x, and then I got here, I got plus 3x, and I get here, and I got plus 3, so then if I combine the like terms, I get what I have over here. So that's a nice way to check your answers in order for you guys to figure out if you factored it out correctly. So now for B, I have t squared plus 6t plus 8. Still parentheses, parentheses. I'm going to put t here and t here. And now I have plus and plus because, again, this plus tells me that they're going to be the same sign. This plus tells me it means they're both going to be pluses or positive. So now since I've gotten that form, I need to figure out which two numbers give me a sum of 6 and a product of 8. And those two numbers happen to be 4 and 2. Okay. For these examples, I have I have to factor out these trinomials when b is negative, so I have a negative b and then I have a positive c. Again, first step doesn't change. I'm still looking for the parentheses. Since my coefficient for the n squared is still 1, I'm going to go n times n here. Again, this plus sign tells me that they're both going to be the same sign. This negative sign tells me it means that they're both going to be a subtraction sign. So now I have to find two values where their sum is going to give me a negative 6, but then their products are going to give me a positive 8. And those numbers are going to be, it's going to be n minus 4, and then it's going to be n minus 2. Again, those can be flipped. It couldn't be, it could look like this as well. You're still going to get the same answer. Okay? B, I got b squared minus 17b plus 72. Again, 
we are parentheses parentheses I got B B the plus sign tells me they're both gonna be the same sign the minus sign tells me they're both gonna be negative and then the two values I'm looking for whether uh, sum is gonna give me a negative 17 and then the product is gonna be a 72 it's gonna be 8 and 9 Next one is I have B is positive, but C is negative. So again, first step doesn't change. I have, I'm going to put Y here, Y here. But now I have a negative sign here. Now beforehand, I said that the reason why it's plus means that both parentheses are going to have the same sign. Because it's negative, that means that one's going to be plus and one's going to be minus. So now what you have to t keep in mind is look at this plus symbol. The plus symbol will tell you that the larger number will be attached to the plus sign. And then in this case it's going to be y plus 5 and y minus 3. And then when you FOIL it out you'll see why. Now let's say for example we decided to go y plus 3 and y minus 5. We had it switched around. The reason what the reason why it's incorrect and it won't look like this trinomial here is because if we foil this out I get y squared and then I get here I get a minus 5y here will give me a plus 3y and then here I'll get a negative 15. So then when I combine like terms, I get y squared minus 5, uh, 2y, I'm sorry, minus 15. So I have a minus here, I have a plus here. That's where the difference comes in. So if you, if you see yourself with a problem that has a minus with the b and a minus with the c, that's good telling you that the larger number then will be attached to the negative value. If you have a plus b and a minus c, that means that the larger number will be attached to the plus value. Okay? So if I got example b, I got b squared plus bx minus 48. So parentheses, parentheses, got x and x. This tells me they're going to be different signs, so I got plus and minus. This sign tells me that the larger value is going to be attached with associated with the plus sign. And now I'm looking for uh, two terms, two values, that their difference is going to give me a positive 8, and their products are going to give me a negative 48. And those two numbers are plus 12, and it's going to be a minus 4. So if I FOIL this out, I'm going to get this trinomial here. So these last two examples, I want to solve the equation. So essentially, I want to solve for x. So what I want to do is I want to be able to set one side of my equal sign equal to 0. And what I want to, really what I want to do is I want to make sure that this uh, highest degree variable is positive when I'm solving for this equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 18 to both sides. So it gives me x squared plus 3x minus 18 equals 0. You don't necessarily have to do it that way. I just think it's much easier to solve when your highest degree is a positive number. So from here, we can reverse FOIL this. So I can go parentheses, parentheses equals 0. I got x and x. This tells me there are going to be different signs. This positive sign tells me that the larger number is going to be attached to the plus sign. And the two values, let's see, the difference will be 3. The products will be negative 18. It will be a plus 6 and a minus 3. So I still need to solve for x. What I can do now is I need to use the zero product property, which means that I can take x plus 6 equals 0 and x minus 3 equals 0. And x here will equal a negative 6. x here will equal 3. Okay. 
Looking at B, I got A squared plus 5A equals 50. First off, let's set one side equal to 0. So I got A squared plus 5A minus 50 equals 0. Now I can factor these out. So I got parentheses, parentheses equals 0. I got A and A. This tells me that they're going to be different signs. This plus sign tells me that the larger number is going to be attached to the plus one. And the difference, that will give me 5, and product 50 will be 10, and be minus 5. So now I can use the zero product property, and for A here, the solution would be negative 10, and A here, the solution would be a positive 5. And that is being able to solve simple trinomials through factoring. Hope this helps. Until next time.